Hey guys, I'm Craig Slate, and you're listening to What's the saying? Save the best for last? Save the best for last. We saved the best for last today, for sure. So we're being joined by none other than Miss Kathy Burns, who is the CEO of IFPA. And she is this this is her baby. This is her baby, and but this is the little one, right? This is not not the big baby. Oh, but, we love all our children. You, you, you love them all. <laughs> we right? love all our children. But uh, no, Kathy, this is uh, you know, and we've held on several interviews that we've had, um, has been for years one of my favorite shows, right? And and, and it's the size. It's it's yeah. what it's Monterey. Exactly. Uh, and then and then the size of the show. But uh, what's it? Forty two years. Yeah, I think it's about 42 years, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable. That's, that's crazy, crazy. Yeah. So what do you think? How's it gone? Yeah, well, first of all, Craig, Ed, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. This is a, a real treat to be able to spend some time with you at the, oh. at the end of our food service <laughs> conference. It's hard to believe that the, the best five and a half hours in uh, the food service world and produce just is concluding. So I appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. So it's been great. Um, we, uh, I'm able to share numbers, which is always exciting. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we crested 2,200 uh, attendees. Uh, last time we were here, we were around 1,900. Um, and what's most impressive about the numbers, because I know people get excited about the top end of oh, the yeah. number, and people always want to know the number, but the depth and breadth of people that were here this time, whether it was the chefs, uh, the K-12 uh, foods, uh, school food service uh, directors, um, the operators, the wholesale distributors, um, I mean, we had such a neat, almost 900, around 900 buyers. So for every one grower, shipper, or business solution provider that was here, there was a buyer. One, almost a one-to-one -one ratio. Wow. Um, so it's been, uh, uh, everything from starting with the education yesterday afternoon, we had a women's reception that was sold out with a wait list, which was incredible. Uh, right before we had our welcoming and opening reception at the barns, which we were at, at capacity. Truth be told, we were probably over capacity. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously we had a great education session this morning uh, where we released some food service research uh, that's available to our members uh, and then did some breakout sessions on items that the industry cares about. And then 11 o'clock, the doors opened and it's been nonstop uh, oh, till 4.30 yeah. this afternoon. Yeah, we saw, I mean, we were down briefly for the show floor. Yeah. I mean, it was wall to wall. Mm -hmm. And still going strong, even late. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and, and have you heard, so there's a slogan that's going around. Really? Uh oh. Well, do I want to hear you're it? You're getting a shirt made. Yeah, and I already forgot. Oh, I remember what it was. You do? Hugs. Not handshake. Hugs, not handshake. I love that yeah. line. Yeah, yeah. I forgot even who said somebody I earlier. Did. Oh, was that you I that said, said that? I oh, said, that, that, this I is said we're an industry of, of handshakes. I actually yeah. said we're an industry of handshakes and hugs uh, versus transactional. And you can see it here in Monterey. You yeah. saw it obviously on the expo floor during our education. When you're even walking around the town or you're going to eat at a restaurant, I mean, it's a homecoming. You're yeah. going to run into and somebody. Th and this industry, food service in particular, has been through a lot yes. over the last three years. So it's nice to see the stabilization, and you can actually see it starting to build. Um, because food service, I mean, trends are set <laughs> by culinary, by chefs. Mm -hmm. um, and that informs what happens ultimately with our palates, our eating consum consumption, and it's a key indicator for where retail's going as well. It's fun to see them excited. So we had Chef Travis Johnson on this oh, morning. Oh, great. He was our first guest. Awesome. Right? Yeah. Chef Travis? Yeah. yeah. Like, he, like, he was on fire. Yeah. And um, so that was a great way to kick off the day. And it is fun to see end users, I guess, if you will. Yeah. Um, excited about. Yeah, and they love to come see the, the innovation, the new products. Um, obviously, the big push this year, and it's been that way actually for the last couple of years, is how can we continue to take labor yeah. out of the back of the house? Um, and so having uh, the wholesale, uh, the distributors, uh, more so the grower shippers and the business solution providers provide solutions to that challenge. Mm -hmm. So that when product comes into the back of the house, it's so much easier to use for these chefs and then they can be really creative and take all that extra time that they need to be able to do, come up with new recipes and put the final touches before a plate uh, goes out to a table. Yeah, we were just talking about with Nelia from Marcon, we we're talking mm -hmm. about value added in the um, mm -hmm. food service space, which honestly I hadn't really thought about much. I think about value added more in the retail space, but shoot, we were talking about that quite a bit. It's 
Yeah, the, the, labor, the labor thing is it's real. It's real. You know, and it's uh, we, we were talking. I think it was near the, the, you know, the demand's there, right? People are dying to go to the restaurants mm -hmm. and eat, right? But uh, the reality of it is, is that they just don't have the staff. They're exactly. Having to cut the hours back, how late they stay open, and like I say, the prep time. So yeah, innovation is is definitely coming in and making a big difference. And, you know, I liked what you said. We talked a little bit about that earlier uh, with Chef Travis. Is, uh, the, the It's the forerunner of the, like you said, what's gonna be at retail, right? Exactly. That's the kind of thing you look for, is like, what's hot at the, at the restaurant? Because that's how I fell in love with Brussels sprouts. Really, okay. yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, can, I can remember going back and, and, you know, it was not something, you know, and I talked about how we grew up as kids. Yeah. I mean, I grew up, in Texas, and you know, it was beef, it was fried, it was, you know, beans were our yeah. only vegetable, yeah. you know. Uh, the, but but the reality was, Brussels wasn't part of it. So right. yeah, I can remember working in Chicago, and going and and this is years back, you know, just before the Brussels thing. Oh, they did this great Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Man, I have become addicted to Brussels sprouts. Good. We yeah. love you for that. That <laughs> yeah. is fantastic. Uh, you know, but I mean, but but really, it's it's the restaurants, it's the chefs that take some oh. of the stuff and, and cauliflower is another. I mean, yeah, think I was thinking about, about the, cauliflower. The, the resurgence of cauliflower. Oh, yeah. yeah, I had a cauliflower pizza bowl the other day, similar to my story with um, Olive Garden and the broccoli instead of the pasta. Oh, that's But good. Uh, yeah. a cauliflower pizza bowl, it knocked my socks off, and it was it was a frozen meal. But then I started looking up recipes where you can make it at home the same way, and it just substitutes, you know, the the, the crust for or with cauliflower. Yeah. You know, it's exciting uh, that happened this week is we had about a hundred school food service directors um, here, mm -hmm. and if you think about where those habits get formed, it's mm -hmm. at, you know when we're young. Yeah, so for if sure. you grew up with beans and you didn't have Brussels sprouts. Right. And, um, so now we're introducing all of these individuals to a whole expo of new products, value-added products mm -hmm. that they can use for schools. Imagine how that's going to change the trajectory of the eating habits of the next generation because I tell you, if we don't change the eating habits of the next generation, this will be the first generation that will not live as long as their parents because of what's happening with obesity, diabetes, um, you know, all those diet related diseases mm -hmm. because even at very young ages, <laughs> they're not getting exposed yeah, sure. to, you know, the vast variety of products that we, that we carry. So I am so excited about the K through 12 food service directors that were here this week and the impact that that's going to have on America's children. How many did you have here? A uh, hundred. A hundred. And that's going to grow. No I questions. saw the list. Um, th that was up from last year, I yeah, think, right? Yes, it was. Yep. Um, some major metro areas. I mean, 100%. I think yeah, um, where they're, the school districts are enormous, right? Cincinnati, we had the director from the Cincinnati. Oh, great. Last, yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. Jessica, had her last yeah. year. That's, I mean, it's a big, it's like, you know, Houston, same thing, right? There's huge school districts. But that's, but, but, but you're spot on. That's how we change the trajectory, really. That's the kind of stuff that you've got to do to change that trajectory. Because, 100%. you know, I mean, the lunch programs, they're not really built for health. No, they're not, and they should be. <laughs> you know, and, and it's unfortunate, but yeah, like you say, I mean, it's like the most precious asset we have, and, and we're not really putting the right, you know, fuel on their plate. And like I say, you know, teach them. And, and you know, produce, that's the thing, is it tastes really good, oh, gosh, you know, yes. and there's just so much you can do with it. And I think it's obviously it's the right path. I think it's the right way to go. It's the right thing we need to do. I mean, convenience has, has helped a lot. I mean, it I think has. about my, oh, yeah. my we got a 22 year old mm -hmm. that loves to eat vegetables, but he would much rather throw a steamer bag in the microwave and steam it for two and a half minutes than, you know, cut veggies, which is yeah. probably what stops some folks from 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 having those items, right? So convenience and value yeah. added, I mean, that's it's huge. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously at IFPA, we're working hard on the policy side uh, to ensure that we get the funding to be able to support you know, school meals, school programs, the fresh fruit and vegetable program mm -hmm. that happens after school. Because the stats are, I mean, can make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. One in 10 Americans, only, only one in 10 Americans are eating the recommended amount of fruits and vegetables every day. 50% of the kids in this country, 50% do not eat a vegetable daily. Wow, that's a pretty amazing statistic. So if you think about the headwinds <coughs> that are against us, and oh, by the way, our own government's dietary guidelines is that half the plate should be fruits and vegetables. 
So I would think our government programs should follow our dietary mm -hmm. guidelines. Yeah. So let's start there. Yeah. And then if you think about the interventions that happen at the school level, <laughs> So it's the whole ecosystem mm -hmm. that needs uh, addressing. And obviously, we're, as I said, we're addressing the policy side. Uh, uh, we have great suppliers and members that are trying to work the value-added side. We're you know, taking labor out of the system. We have incredible chefs and operators and retailers that are working the marketing side and quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, you also, we have to have consistent quality. Sure. You know, when people go to a store or they eat at a restaurant, they expect consistent quality because you're not going to get repeat business if you have a bad experience no, <laughs> with a particular piece of fruit or, or a vegetable. So well, we need to so look at a whole system. They really do, yeah. don't they? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it. If I have a bad experience, I'm not going to go back because there's so many other options to go spend my money at a, at a different restaurant. Yeah, and hopefully it's, yeah, and the problem is if you opt out of a fruit or a vegetable and now all of a sudden you're picking up a bag of chips or a Kind Bar, um, you know, and that's the trade-off, that's obviously not good for any of us mm -hmm. and the business that we love so much and are fighting for so hard. Yeah. Now we still, you know, we, we, we talk about young people in the education though. I do feel like at least in my kids, mm -hmm. uh, particularly my son just graduated out of ASU, uh, He's, you know, and maybe it's just being in a, in a family where we talk about it or whatever. I mean, my, my wife was super great when the kids were growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have, we, sodas just didn't exist. You, know, mm -hmm. you don't have Cokes, mm -hmm. you don't have things. And, and so she was really good, and maybe that's part of the input. But I, I just feel like that they are more educated than I was, certainly, in terms of health. I mean, they, they eat healthier than I did, for sure. Yeah, I have, a, I have strong hope uh, for millennials and, and Gen Z, and we saw some data this morning that shows that they are absolutely looking for more fruits and vegetables, that quality is important, that convenience is important, mm -hmm. speed, mm -hmm. using phones, you know, they want it, they want it now, mm -hmm. um, and it has to be convenient. So, the, you know, we're painting uh, a really good picture for the next generation that's coming up. But, you know, we're all, to, our kids are blessed to have access. Yeah. <laughs> and so, it, you know, there's a percent of the population that the only meal they get is at school. Mm -hmm. So making sure that we're dealing with those access issues, that we have the, a food bank system that can handle um, fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and, and not just the hard goods, so to speak, um, that we can get, we can get, fruits and vegetables to areas that um, a dollar store or a convenience store is their only grocery store in town. Mm -hmm. So again, I think if we look at our kids, mm -hmm. absolutely, you know, they're growing up in a world where they understand the value of fruits and vegetables, they can afford fruits and vegetables, they know how to cook them, <laughs> yeah. um, and they get excited about, you know, what's possible with them. That's not the whole, unfortunately, that's not the whole population. Some food we, banks, like Houston, is phenomenal, Yeah. Um, but that we need to work at the whole ecosystem. Food bank. It is. Really Houston's cool. incredible. Yeah. So you mentioned something, so I think it's important that you mentioned the policy side of it, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, government is in everybody's life. It is. Sometimes good and sometimes bad. <laughs> so, you know, we'll just go with that. But yeah. you've got a conference coming up. I Another do. one of my, so, so certainly I, I love it in terms of the selling show, but being yeah. in D.C. and... Walk on the Hill. Talk a little bit about what you guys have coming up and, and what's going to be going on this year. Yeah, if I could have one call to action uh, for the industry, it's to um, come to the Washington Conference. It's in mid-September. Um, there is no Im more important time than right now. We have the Farm Bill uh, being reauthorized. It uh, technically runs out at the end of September. And, you know, 83% of the Farm Bill funding is nutrition. Mm -hmm. SNAP, obviously, is a big part of that. Uh, the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, another big part of that, which we advocate for our industry for. And, and didn't you guys get something put back in the farm bill that they had pulled out? Yeah, so we're working on, I mean, it hasn't fully been approved, so we actually, believe it or not, have 109 recommendations uh, related to the farm bill. Wow. We have uh, what's called the Specialty Crop Farm Bill Alliance, so it's about 150 uh, organizations, specialty crop organizations that come together uh, over a year, quite frankly. Um, that, f that create recommendations that are important for our industry to get funded through the Farm Bill. Okay. So we're in the process right now, or the teams are in the process right now of actually lobbying for you know, the things that are most important to us out of the Farm Bill. The real burning platform right now is related to WIC. 
they, uh, what's happening is there's a recommendation right now to cut WIC by 70%. The fruit and vegetable, that's what you're talking about, yeah. I think, Craig, um, is a fruit and vegetable benefit that you can only use to buy fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. when, uh, you know, that's an overlay onto WIC. Right now, women get $44 a month, $44 a month for fruits and vegetables. They want to take that down to 13 Children get $24 a month. They want to take it down to 11 Wow. What can you buy? Yeah, for, for sure. For $11. And if nutrition is supposed to be the most important thing. <laughs> kind of, you know, kind of uh, that, going in the wrong direction, Exactly. Right? And if you think about, you know, the implications of, even just think about education. Like, if I'm going to school and I'm hungry, <laughs> How am I going to learn? I mean, like, I'm, you know, oh, there's so many studies that show that that's so good. You know, having a, a nutritious breakfast, lunch, obviously dinner, uh, is good for education and the future generations to ultimately lead our country. But we've got some work to do. So the Washington Conference, getting back to your question, right. provides us the opportunity to advocate for the Farm Bill, to advocate for nutrition programs, um, you know, Immigration reform, uh, continuing to advocate for workforce labor, right. uh, which is a huge priority for us. Uh, working with the FDA and making sure that we have a good partnership uh, with the FDA. So the the and that doesn't include actually going to the Hill and lobbying for the the things that are most important because there's nothing more important from than for our members to go to Hill to tell the story. You know, Craig. Oh yeah, you've been right. there. You've well, been and, there. And it's funny. So '99, I was class four. And, oh, that's and awesome. We were class four, and WIC, which was amazing. And WIC, fruits and vegetables were not even part of WIC in 1999. So that was our lobbying effort. And it, I, I want to say it was seven or eight years from that point we started before it ever actually got, which is amazing. Now, here it is, fast forward to whatever, exactly. however many years that is, 27, 25 years later, and they're trying to, to, to claw it back. It just it's, makes no sense, but... Again, I said some things in government are good and some exactly. are bad, and you know that's the way it goes. I will tell you though to, uh, that DC is a contact sport. <laughs> it's a great event. There. I mean, it's, you got to be it's, there. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> your job—it's your job to promote it. It is. You, I know, are Fair passionate point. about it, but I haven't been for a couple of years. But I will tell you what: if anybody is thinking about it and has never been, it's an eye-opening experience. Particularly, yeah. I mean, I live in Texas, so. Um, I've, I've been a couple times, but there are folks throughout the country that don't go to D.C. very often. And exactly. It's, um, it's an energizing experience. It is. I mean, and it's, I come back politically charged when I'm not, I don't consider myself that political, but yeah. um, it's, it's, it's a quite, it's an experience. It's one of my favorites, too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's no doubt. It's, yeah. it's, it's, everybody should at least go once, but mm -hmm. you'll see how the sausage is made, and it is a contact sport, and <laughs> you're spot on. And it, yeah. It's great education. For it sure. is, and, 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 I, and I can't now, you know, being in D.C. for 18 months and, and talking with members of Congress, yes, we will advocate, we will continue to advocate, we have our members back, but there's nothing like a member, someone in the supplier community, in the retail community, the food service community, sitting across from their member of Congress, mm -hmm. talking about a story that will impact their district. Mm -hmm. No, nothing replaces that. So I awesome. would love to have as many people that are listening there to, yeah. to join us. And I promise you, we'll, we'll demystify DC. We have your back there for sure. Very good. <laughs> be awesome. good. Yeah. So I know you're up against a hard yeah. stop, and so there's we, one other big event. Well, we, yeah, I was going to say we will live one last plug, but okay. we do. We uh, and that's the, the big show that's yeah. coming. Up. Well, you have to share. We're in Anaheim. Mm. Uh, it's uh, it's rocking already. Uh, you know, obviously we have the, the <laughs> exhibitors uh, have picked their spots, yeah. and I think we have a few booths left. So if anyone's out there interested, uh, whether you want to be a first time exhibitor, exhibitor, or if we do have, I, I think we do have a little bit of space left, but we, we won't come October. No, um, you, yeah, you did that. And uh, you know, it's um, you know we represent the globe. Uh, there's a lot of, if this show is any indication, this usually is a precursor for what's going mm -hmm. to happen right. uh, at, our, at our global show in October. Um, it's going to be a barn burner. Um, but what's most important is the connections that are made there. Um, it's a, it is all, I mean, I know it's, lar obviously, it's larger than this show. But it does feel small when you're walking around and you're, you know, you're seeing people you haven't seen in a while. Sure. We have some great education tracks uh, that we're super excited about. Uh, a lot of networking events. So, I mean, the show speaks for itself, but uh, we're excited because, you know, we're at a point now where we're at a turning point, you know, in a post-COVID world, 
COVID was awful, horrific. Mm -hmm. You know, never want to go through a pandemic like that again uh, in our lives, obviously. But what COVID did do is it put health at the center of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And if this industry doesn't, if we as an industry don't take advantage of that, shame on us. Yeah. And the Global Show gives us a platform to come together to talk about the challenges, yep. to say how are we going to solve these collectively, and quite frankly, advocate for our industry because I, you know, I just love our industry, but we're humble. And, you know, I tell everyone there's a heart and soul to this industry like no other part of the store and no other part of the plate. And, but we're humble to a fault at some point. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the Washington Conference or the Global Show, we got to... Beat our chest a little bit. Yeah, we got to get, out, we gotta get out there. We got to be a little more brave. Yeah. We got to be, have a little more edge. Other, other parts of the plate and other parts of the store are doing it. And we have, we're the good guys. <laughs> and we are, and, <laughs> and you're right. We've got the great it, products. It, it, it's all right. Yeah, and, and, yeah. It, and it is messaging. It is, it is like I say, being constant advocates for it and getting the word out. You know, partly what we're hopefully going to do with something like this is this, this is a way maybe to connect with somebody, you know, outside of not just in this business, right? I mean, you yeah. know, there's other people that are interested in producing and you know, what, what we're doing. And, Absolutely. You know, we're, we're hopefully uh, can drive some of that change. Kathy, we, we can't say thank you enough for letting us be here last oh, year. God. and Thank you for the support. This has been outstanding. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank both of you uh, for investing your time in being here and and having people come and tell their stories. Um, oh, that's I mean, you are selfish so for us because it's the it's our favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, if it's selfish for you, we're we're benefiting just as much. And um, you know, for you guys to invest your personal time in this way to to allow people to tell their stories, um, it's a gift. It's a gift to the industry and it's a gift to IFPA. So thank you both and look well, forward to seeing you in DC. <laughs> really? <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, really appreciate both of you. For sure, thank you very much yeah. and uh, best of luck. Uh, thank you. I guess you've got some awards to go we to. We do. All right, go. Yep, we You're get to give out some, some awards. Some awards and everything. And getting, uh, Ed and I will be back for the wrap up here in about uh, five or 10 minutes and then uh, we will uh, pack it up and head back. But for now, we're gonna say goodbye to Kathy and uh, we'll see you.